Hi everybody, this is Guru Francis Runner from Filipino Martial Arts School and today's another episode of Bayani Talk. <laughs> FMAschool.com Hi everybody, this is Guru Francis Turner from Filipino Martial Arts School and today's another episode of Bayani Talk. And today I'd like to talk about whatever happened to saying I don't know. Um, so I recently had a student that was inquiring to join my, my UCR, UC Riverside um, group. Now because of this whole COVID thing, we can't meet in person, we're you know, social distancing, but we, you know, I still want to be able to get them a chance to, to get to know the crew and get to know me as their instructor. So every Wednesday we do a video night with the rest of uh, my school and we invited him to come tag along so he watched the video and all that stuff and then afterwards it was just him and me talking at the end so when I, I talked to him he's like do you have any FMA background now I'm assuming he did because he's the reason why he inquired to join the club was that he wanted to know where what he where he can uh, if he can walk around with his sticks on campus and I said to him you know and I passed it on to the to the club president but then now it was a chance for me to talk to him. So I asked him, so what styles have you practiced? Have you practiced FMA before? And he said, yes. And I said, what style have you practiced? And he goes, well, I'm pretty good at Pekiti Tertia, uh, Pakamut, uh, uh, Panantukan. Uh, and then I'm like, okay, well, that's great. You know, that was kind of a, a mini red flag because he was only 20 years old. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, all right, so what's the name of your teachers? Oh, there's several of them. I'm like, yeah, you mentioned that, but why can't you tell me the name of your teacher? Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite sure if I should say that to you. Well, I mean, you know, that's, of course, obviously your choice. But it's also my choice whether to allow you my club or not. So if you're not going to tell me their names, and you ask me why is that necessary. It was, it's necessary because, I like, because FMA is such a small community that I like to get their blessings first. Now, UCR is a unique uh, situation. Because most of the students that go to UCR, if they have an FMA background, um, did not leave their school because they just hated their school or there was a falling out with their instructor. They left their school because they moved to UC to Riverside. And now they want to continue their training and I'm the only Filipino martial arts instructor at UC Riverside. So when they do that, it's not because they had a bad blood with their instructor. It's just geographically it made more sense for them to continue their training at, at the UCR group. So, but then this guy refused, still refused to give me the names of the instructor. So I told him, like, listen, again, I'm not trying to get their permission. I'm trying to get their blessing. FMA is such a small community that, that you know, if I don't know your direct instructor, I would know somebody that would know him or her. So, um, but he still wouldn't, if he refused to tell me the name of the instructor, I said, well, then, if you, if you don't trust me enough to tell me the name of the instructor, then I'm sorry. You can never be part of my, my crew. And that's when he finally said that he never formally trained with anybody that he obviously, he said that I, he started, he wanted to start his FMA training and he obviously started, and this is his word, he obviously started training via video or YouTube, which a lot of us in the industry, we call it YouTube warrior. Anyway, so um, the crazy thing about this, I'm like, you know, I'm not necessarily against that, but for me, formal training has to have a direct connection with your instructor, not just kind of like uh, a random person watching a video. Now, with this COVID world that we live in, most of the most, if not all, martial arts schools are now done online. Even Filipino martial arts school is now done online. So, but still, there's still a one-on-one -on -one connection, and that I know that this person is my student, and I'm this person's teacher. So, but in but when you're just watching YouTube videos, you're just saying that ah, uh, it's just a random video that the instructor has no idea that you're even watching your his or her video. So after a few minutes, he started telling me like why. Why did you say you did it? He goes, well, because I have a really good, sharp, and observant uh, mind. I said, why do you say that? Well, because I know what's good and what's bad. And I said, wow. And do you, and then, oh, and on, on side note, he's not, he doesn't have any martial arts background whatsoever. All, I would, I would, I'm, I'm confident enough to say that all his martial arts training has been done through YouTube and YouTube only. Um, so when I started uh, grilling him about that, I said, yeah, so I, I mean, I know what's good and what's bad, and I saw your videos, and you're definitely legit. Well, I'm like, well, first of all, thank you for that, but then how do you know I'm legit? You know, like, because I have a really observant mind. I'm like, okay. 
and I use this analogy all the time when somebody tells me this, something to this line. I said, you know what? When, let's say you've never been, you've never seen fire before, right? And I can tell you all day long, as somebody who has experience with fire, that that fire burns, right? I can tell you, but you, you don't respect it until you get burned for the first time. Until f the, the, the heat of the flame touches your skin, you're like, ah! You never knew how hot it was until, or how painful it was until you get burned for the first time. So then I transpose that analogy to what he's saying. How do you know what's good and what's bad if you've never experienced it at all? And he said, well, because like I said, I'm like, look, man, here's the thing. It's like, if you're not going to admit that you don't know something, then I can never be your teacher. Because it's not going to be one of those things where you come to my class and start teaching me what you think is right and what's wrong. All right? You don't pay me to tell you for you to tell me what's right and what's wrong you pay me to tell you what's right and what's wrong and what I why I think that way and I'm like I can't believe that in this day and age people cannot just say I don't know not knowing is the is the beginning of wisdom it's the beginning of learning how to do something I mean when we all started with FMA or any martial arts training we said I don't know how to do this but I want to learn and that is the beginning of the journey of your Filipino martial arts career and I can't see why anybody would be so arrogant to say that they don't know that they can't say that they don't know so the condition that I gave this student is like if you're gonna come become my student then you're gonna need to empty your cup you're gonna not tell me the moment you tell me but this video says you're out you're absolutely out I'm not even gonna tolerate that and now I'm not saying that anybody with other F uh, FMA program or, or um, uh, system cannot come to my program no what I'm just saying is anybody is welcome to Filipino martial arts school as long as you empty your cup and, and let me be the teacher and you be the student. I don't know. It makes sense to me. Do you guys agree? If, you're go, if, if somebody's going to join your program from another system that, that they should empty their cup first, comment down below. Now, if you are looking for a Filipino martial arts school, whether you have FMA, MA background, but you are open to keeping your mind open and emptying your cup, then visit us at the web at www.fmaschool.com. Until then, my name is Guru Francis Serrano from Filipino Martial Arts School. Peace out, God bless, and keep swinging them sticks.